Welcome everyone to the APH Virtual Excel Academy. Today is what makes music moving and grooving. Hmm, not sure. Guess we're going to find out. Feel free to drop in the chat who you are and where you're from. We are happy to have you with us today. Again, welcome to the APH Virtual Excel Academy. What makes music moving and grooving. We are glad to have you with us today. I just realized I gave the wrong person closed captioning. So let me withdraw that and give that to the right person. Sorry about that. Your captions will start in a minute. Again, welcome to APH Virtual Excel Academy. What makes music moving and grooving? And I am going to introduce you to Amelia Welsh. She is going to get us going with music. Welcome, Amelia. Hi, everybody. My name is Amelia, and I would like to start off today's lesson by playing you guys a little song. Okay, um, does anybody know what song I just played? I'm curious. We're going to talk about it a lot more today. We're going to use that song that I just played as an example to talk about what makes music moving and grooving. So before we get into it, does anybody know what song I just played? And I'm going to be looking over here to look into the chat because I really want to see what you guys are saying. And I'd love to see if you know what song I played. If you don't, don't worry about it because I'm going to tell you in a minute. But if you do know, maybe ask somebody who's in the room with you to help. If you need help, ask a teacher and type into the chat if you know. And I'll give you just a minute to think about it because sometimes, sometimes it's hard to remember. Um, today, we're going to be talking about what makes music moving and grooving. And I love talking about music because I love to make music all the time. Um, we're getting a couple answers in the chat. So I'm gonna look over here at my chat window. Monica wonders if it's happy birthday. That is a very good guess, Monica. And I'm actually might be playing happy birthday later, but it's not happy birthday, but that's a really good guess. And Zach says he knows the song, but not the name. That's okay, Zach. I was playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. Have you heard of Mary Had a Little Lamb? I used to sing that song all the time when I was a kid. It's a really fun little song about a girl named Mary who has a little lamb. So before we get into all the details about the moving and grooving of that song, does anybody know what I was playing to make that music? I wasn't singing it. I was playing an instrument, and I'm wondering if anyone knows what it is. I'm going to play it again and listen to the instrument and tell me if you know what it is. playing a piano to make that sound. Yes, Monica in the chat says she thinks it's a piano. Good job, Monica. You are right. It's a piano. So I don't have a piano at home because sometimes pianos are really big and I live in a really small apartment, but sometimes pianos can be really small too. So before we get into music, let's talk about pianos. Does anyone here, has anyone here played a piano? before. Do you know how to play piano? If you have, good job. Piano is sometimes really hard. I took piano lessons for many years when I was younger and I used to be okay at playing the piano and now I'm not as good because I stopped practicing. But I'm wondering if anyone here practices and plays piano. Okay, I'm getting an answer in the chat 
and Zach says that he doesn't, but he wants to learn. And that's really fun, Zach. Yeah, you should definitely see if you can because piano is a really cool way to play music. And I also want to encourage you guys, if you want to type in the chat, because I'm going to be asking a lot of questions today about music and about pianos and all that stuff. And I really want to hear your responses. So if you can, just type a Y for yes and an N for no. So if you can play the piano, why don't you type a Y in the chat? And then I can tell. And if you can't play the piano, you can type an N for no. Cami just put in the chat a Y so she can play the piano. That's really fun. I love that, Cami. So now that we're talking about piano, I'm curious if you know how a piano makes sound. What is a piano? How does it make music? What, what's all this stuff about a piano? So a piano is an instrument, which I'm sure many of you know what an instrument is, but if you don't, an instrument in this context is something we use to make music, like a flute or a piano like we're using, or it could be a guitar or it could be a violin. There's all kinds of musical instruments. So a piano is an instrument that uses strings. So it's the strings are what make the sound and a piano has little hammers that come down and they hit the strings to make the sound. Isn't that crazy when you're hearing this? That sound is being made by little hammers coming down and hitting the strings and then they come off and the string vibrates and it makes that beautiful sound. All right, I have another question for you all. So I'm, I would love if you could type a Y in the chat for yes or an N for no. So here's my question. Do you like listening to music? Have you listened to music and thought, this is pretty great. I love listening to music, any kind of music. If you do, type a yes or why. If you don't, you can type an N or no. And I see that Zach in the chat said yes with an exclamation point. And Cammie said yes. And then we have Joy who said that yes, she loves music. Also, Monica is saying yes. Awesome. So we, we have some music lovers here, which is good because that's all we're talking about today. So I also love listening to music. And sometimes when I'm listening to music, have you noticed that sometimes you'll kind of sway back and forth or you'll tap your foot to the rhythm? Oh, that's a word we're going to talk about later. Rhythm. You'll sway back and forth. You might sing along to the words. If you don't know the words, you might sing along to the tune, just the melody. Melody, that's a word we're going to learn today. We're going to learn a lot of new words today. So when you're listening to music, do you ever find yourself kind of swaying back and forth and dancing to the music you're listening to? If you do, go ahead and type a Y. If you don't, you don't know what I'm talking about. You've never danced to music. You can type an N. But I have a feeling that most of us, when we listen to music, we kind of we want to sway, we want to dance, we want to move. Something makes us want to move and groove when we listen to music. And I see in the chat that Zach says he taps his foot. I do this too, Zach. It's something I think a lot of people do when we listen to music because we, we want to get involved with the music because it's so fun. So today we're going to talk about all the things that make music moving and grooving, which is just a fun little way to say that you wanna move, you wanna dance. And I also see in the chat box that Monica says she likes to clap to the beat. That is so fun. I didn't even remember that, that people would clap to the beat. I do that too. And my fiance is actually a drummer. He plays drums, which is another instrument that makes clapping sounds for the beat. So whenever I clap to the beat, he always says, no, no, you're doing it wrong. And he'll show me how to do it right. So <laughs> I clap to the beat too. Okay, now we're going to get into my favorite thing about why music is moving and grooving. So I love to, do, to make things into three parts when we're learning because I think that really helps. So we have three things today. 
three words that we're going to talk about that describe how music is moving and grooving. And we're going to go through each word and we're going to talk about it and we're going to play the piano and sing and do different examples about how it all works. So let's get right into the meat of all this. So what makes music moving and grooving? That's the main question. Well, I'm going to say it another way. What makes music interesting to listen to? Before we answer the question, let's think about the words. What does interesting mean? Do you know that word? Have you heard the word interesting? If you have, go ahead and type a Y into the chat. And if you haven't, don't worry about it because we're going to talk about it. I see that in the chat, Joy says yes, she has heard the word interesting. And so has Zach. And um, let's see if anybody else has. Uh, the word interesting, I looked it up. And some of the definitions that I came up with, I see Cami in the chat also says why. She says, yes, she does know the word interesting. So when I think that music is moving and grooving and you like to listen to it, you like to listen to it because the music is so interesting to you. You listen to it and you say, wow, this is really fun. I like the way it sounds. I like the way it makes me feel. I like the words. Something about it is interesting. So let's use the word interesting in a sentence. Here's my sentence. Wow, Amelia's lesson today on moving and grooving is just so interesting. It was so awesome. I loved it. It was so fun. That is the sentence that I would use interesting in. Um, so if you feel the same way about music, you would love it. You would think it's so interesting to listen to. It makes you feel excited. It's fun. And that's how I feel about listening to music. And I think that the three things we're going to talk about are the reason why we think music is so interesting. So. Those three things, the first one, I'm going to name all of them, but then we're going to go back over them. So the first one is rhythm. Remember, I said that word earlier, rhythm. The second one is melody. And the third thing is harmony. So I don't know if you've not heard the words rhythm, melody, and harmony before, or maybe you have. We're going to talk about them in the context of music. So. We're going to use the song that I played at the very beginning. If you remember, it was Mary Had a Little Lamb. So I'm going to play it one more time, and then we're going to talk about what makes it moving and grooving. So let's play it one more time, and this time I'll sing along with the words. And you can sing along at home if you know the words. Mary had a little lamb, little Okay, I hope that was interesting to you and that you thought it was fun. And let's talk about that first topic from those three things that I just mentioned. So if you remember, the first one is a word called rhythm. Has anyone heard the word rhythm before? If you have, go ahead and put a Y in the chat because I'd love to know if you've heard the word rhythm. So. Rhythm is something that all music uses. And I'm seeing in the chat box that Cami says, yes, she has, and so does Joy. So some of us have heard the word rhythm. Well, let's talk about it a little bit more. So I looked up the word rhythm in the dictionary because I like to go to the dictionary to get a good definition of words. Even if I think I know what they mean, sometimes it's helpful to go read a different definition. So the dictionary tells us that rhythm is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of sounds. So the dictionary said that rhythm was a strong, regular, repeated pattern of sounds. So if rhythm 
is a repeated pattern of sounds, let's talk about what that means. Repeated is a word that means it happens more than once. So if I said, I'm going to repeat a word, I would say, I'm gonna repeat the word hello. If I repeat the word hello, I'll say, hello, hello, hello. I repeated it by saying it multiple times in a row. So when we talk about music, when the rhythm is repeated, it's the same pulse, th maybe three times, maybe more, multiple times in a row. So let's do a little experiment. If you can, I want everybody to put your hands up in front of you like you are gonna be praying or something. Put your hands up and we're gonna clap. We're gonna do a little clapping experiment to practice our rhythm. So don't worry about making it perfect because mine's not gonna be perfect. So the first thing we're gonna do is just clap your hands together. Everybody at home, just try clapping your hands together. It doesn't even have to be loud. Mine isn't making much of a sound. Okay, so now we're gonna practice a rhythm. So we're just gonna do a really easy rhythm of four beats, which is what we call in music, sometimes we call the pulse, the beat. So we're just gonna do four in a row. And I'll show you first, and then we can all practice it together, okay? So we're learning how to practice our rhythm. So hold your hands up and clap once, twice, three times, and then a fourth time. Okay, now do it all in a row, and I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just draft this. So just try clapping those four claps in a row. Okay, I would love to know in the chat box if you did the clapping and you practiced your rhythm. So if you tried the clapping, go ahead and put a Y in the chat so I can see if you practiced that rhythm. And while I'm waiting to see, I'm gonna show you one more time. So we're gonna... Okay, I'm getting some messages in the chat. So Cammie said that she did. Thanks, Cammie, good job. And Zach also says yes, he did his clapping. And then we have Tammy saying that yes, she also did the rhythm for clapping. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you for doing that experiment. I think it's way more fun to try things yourself than to just listen to me talk about it. So with the clapping for the rhythm, if we think about the song that we're going to be learning today, Mary Had a Little Lamb, I'm going to clap the rhythm of Mary Had a Little Lamb, okay? I'll sing the words and clap along with myself so that we can kind of see how it all goes together. Okay, so you can try and clap along at home if you want, or you can just watch, and I'm going to see if I can clap the rhythm to Mary Had a Little Lamb. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Okay, did anyone notice my clapping while I was singing? How it was all the same, it kept going the same no matter what my voice was doing. Sometimes I was singing more than one note, sometimes I was just singing one, but the rhythm kept going the same. So rhythm in music is consistent, and it's constant, and it keeps going. And Zach just said in the chat that I could do that without messing up. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, sometimes it is hard. That's a good point from Zach. That's why musicians have to practice so much because you have to be thinking about the rhythm and thinking about the notes that you're singing and other things. But when those things all work together, you get that really fun moving and grooving music that we all want. So I want everybody to do it with me. Let's all clap and I'll sing Mary Had a Little Lamb. And everybody at home clap along with me. And if you want to try singing, you can. But if you just want to listen to me and clap along with me, do that too. Because sometimes, like Zach said, it's a little hard to sing and clap at the same time. So 
Let's try it all together, okay? I'm gonna sing and clap, and you guys can clap with me. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Okay, I would love to know in the chat box how you did with clapping. Was it easy? Was it not easy? If you, if you liked the clapping and you, you feel like it was easy, go ahead and type a, a Y in the chat so I can see if you liked it. If you liked the clapping with me singing, if it made you feel a little moving and grooving for the music. Zach in the chat says yes, thank you Zach. And then Cami also said yes. But it's okay if you didn't like it, if it was a little hard. Sometimes it's difficult to clap with the singing. But thank you for trying, and I think it's really fun to do this together. Also, I just saw in the chat that Joy said yes to, so thank you, Joy. Okay, so we're talking about rhythm, and rhythm is that constant pulse that's happening while we're singing in this example or playing the piano or whatever instrument we're playing. So that is rhythm, but when we're singing, there's another aspect of rhythm. So without the clapping, when I was singing the, the words for the song, you might have noticed the words didn't always line up with my clapping. And that's because there's a rhythm to the words. So the rhythm to the words is pretty simple. <clears throat> for this song, it was Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. So it's not quite as consistent as that first rhythm we were practicing. It's a bit more uh, smaller pieces at a time because the words are going by fast. So sometimes, now this can be kind of confusing, but sometimes when you're playing music, there's more than one rhythm happening at the same time. Sometimes when you're playing music, there's more than one rhythm happening at the same time. And that can be kind of confusing, but I think you all did really, really well <clears throat> with the clapping. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. I think you all did really well with the clapping while I was singing a different rhythm. So you guys are amazing and thank you for doing that. Okay, now we know what rhythm is. So now that we know what rhythm is, if you remember, I was talking about three things. The first one was rhythm, and now we know what rhythm is. And now we're going to go into our second thing, which is melody. So does anybody know what melody is? Have you heard the word melody before? If you have, go ahead and type a Y into the chat. Have you heard the word melody? Cammie says yes. Cammie's heard the word melody. I'm looking in the chat. Zach says yes, and so does Tammy. Okay, so we kind of know what melody is. We've heard the word before. But let's talk about it for this song, for Mary Had a Little Lamb. So the melody of the song is that part that gets stuck in your head. Tomorrow, when you're just going about your business, suddenly you'll think in your head, Mary had a little lamb, and you'll be like, oh my goodness, I can't get this song out of my head. That is the melody, the part that you remember. So the melody for Mary Had a Little Lamb is a really simple melody, but it's really fun, and it always makes you kind of sway and get that move and the groove in that we were talking about. So the melody works with the rhythm. So if you remember when we were talking about rhythm, I mentioned how we, we did the little claps with the words. We did, Mary has a little lamb. So that has a rhythm, but it doesn't have any melody. Mary had a little lamb. I'm just speaking the words pretty normally. I'm not singing them, but I'm clapping the rhythm. Then if we put on the melody, Mary had a little lamb. 
I was singing the melody and I was clapping the rhythm of the melody. So the melody works with the rhythm. Without rhythm, the melody would just be all over the place. It could be, Mary had a little lamb. It could be, Mary had a little lamb. It could be crazy. It could be anything. But because we know the rhythm, we know it's, Mary had a little lamb. And we know it's always going to be the same, just like that. So the melody and the rhythm kind of work together to create the part of the song that always gets stuck in your head the next day. So I'm going to play the melody on the piano and I'm going to sing it. And I would love for everyone at home to sing along with me if you know the song. And we're going to sing the melody. So while you're singing, remember that this is the melody, but it's also working together with the rhythm to create the perfect melody that you can sing. So I'm going to play it and we're going to sing. <clears throat> I'd love to know in if you guys sang the melody along with me. So if you did, if you sang the melody with me, please go ahead and type a Y into the chat because I'd love to know if you sang along and practice the melody to the song. Cammie says in all caps, yes, she did. I know Cammie loves to sing. So thank you so much, Cammie, for singing along with us. All right, that is awesome. So. Guys, we have talked about melody and rhythm. Oh, and I see in the chat that Tammy says she was too busy listening to my voice. Oh, thank, thank you so much, Tammy. <laughs> That's so sweet. And then Zach says, no, he doesn't like to sing. That's okay, Zach. Thank you for being here anyway. And also, melody isn't always about singing. We can just play it on the piano. So let me just play the melody without me singing. So you can just hear it without the words, just the sounds of the melody. Okay, that was just the melody without the words. So sometimes when we're playing the melody, there isn't any words, depending on what song you're singing or playing. So when you're singing, usually there are words. But sometimes when you're just playing a piano like I am, you might play a song that doesn't have any words. And you might think to yourself, if there aren't any words, does that mean there's still a melody? And the answer is yes. There is still a melody, and sometimes people don't put words on the melody, but there probably still is one. With Mary Has a Little Lamb, there's actually a couple more verses, too. So the melody stays the same, but the words change to add to the story. So if it didn't have the words, we wouldn't get that extra story. So that's why words sometimes add something to music to tell the story. But you don't necessarily need words to practice your melody. So we have talked about the first two parts of what makes music moving and grooving, which are rhythm and melody. So let's go back and review rhythm before we go on to the third part. So if you remember, rhythm was a repeated pattern of sounds. So I would love to maybe have some people come on, come on the mic and show me their rhythm with their clapping, if we can do that. I would love to have people come on and show me their clapping rhythm. And if you want to come on and clap, you can say in the chat, you can type a Y if you want. If you don't, I will just show you again and we don't have to have anybody come on. But I would love to have people come on if they want. So if you want to come on, <clears throat> Go ahead and type a Y in the chat and we'll practice our rhythm together. 
And hello, Amelia. This is yes. Robin from the background. Students, you can raise your digital hand. You do not need to turn on your camera, but you can just clap. And Miss Amelia can hear you. So go ahead and raise that digital hand and let's hear some of you with your awesome rhythm clapping skills. And we don't just have to clap to Mary Had a Little Lamb. You can clap whatever you'd like. I'd love to just hear any clapping, any rhythm. If nobody wants to come on and clap, that's okay. I can show you again. Oh, Zach in the chat says that he doesn't like to sing, <laughs> so he doesn't want to come on. That's okay. Thank you, Zach. I'll show you again, okay? So I'll sing the song one more time and I'll clap. And how about you all do it at home with me to practice? So don't be nervous. Nobody can hear you. You're just practicing and I'll clap along with you. So let's go through Mary Had a Little Lamb and clap those big beats that we were clapping at the very beginning to practice our rhythm. And you can sing if you want but you also can just concentrate on the clapping if that's what you wanna do. So let's go ahead and try. All right, ready? Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Okay, awesome. So did you all practice at home? If you want to type a Y in the chat and let me know, you can, but that's great. We've gone over rhythm. So rhythm is that clapping. Now, before we move on to the third thing that makes music moving and grooving, let's review that second piece. Does anyone remember what the second thing was that we talked about? We talked about rhythm. And then we talked about the part of the song that gets stuck in your head. Does anybody remember what that's called? If you do, type a Y in the chat. I want it's a little quiz. Go ahead and type a Y in the chat if you remember what that word was. It's a new word, so if you don't remember, it's okay. Tammy says Y. Okay, good job, Tammy. So the word is melody. And Zach says yes too. Good job. So yes, so we had our rhythm and Cammie says melody too. Great job guys. So we had our rhythm and then we have our melody. So let's go over that melody again. Now that we've reviewed our rhythm, we know rhythm makes music moving and grooving, but without the melody, it just sounds like this. It's just clapping. There's nothing it's still interesting. You're like, oh yeah, you can sway with the clapping. You can tap your foot, but you can't necessarily sing along to it. You can't groove as much as we want to. So that's where the melody comes in. So I'm gonna go back to the piano and I'm gonna play our melody. And if you want to at home, you can practice clapping your rhythm while I'm playing. I can't clap and play at the same time, so it's up to you to practice your clapping while I play the melody. Okay, one more time on the melody. you guys had a chance to clap along. So now we've done rhythm and we've done melody. And we've talked about how those two parts of music work together to make a part of the song you can sing. And it kind of makes you sway back and forth. But there's a third part, this third part that adds to the song. And it is something called harmony. So the third part is called harmony. So we got rhythm, we've got melody, 
and now we have harmony. So what is harmony? Has anyone heard that word before? I don't think it's as well known as the word melody, but I'd love to know if you've heard the word harmony, type a Y in the chat and let me know. Okay, Cami in the chat says Y. Yes, she's heard harmony, awesome. And so has Tammy, oh, this is great. And Zach in the chat says he plays harmony on his baritone. This is so cool. Okay, you guys know what harmony is. That's awesome. It's a little bit of a more in-depth concept for music. And what I mean by that is it's not quite as easy to sing as the melody. The melody, you can sing by yourself. You don't need anyone else. But for harmony, you need someone else. Because harmony is how multiple notes work together. Okay. I just explained harmony really fast and I'm going to break it down and play it on the piano for you just so we can practice really knowing what harmony is. So if I play this note, I'm playing different notes. The first one was higher than the second one. Mary had a little lamb. So there's different notes, but they're all happening at once. At all, no, not at once. <laughs> That's not what I meant. They're all happening individually. So each note is by itself. Mary had a little lamb. So Harmony is when there's more than one note being played or sung at the same time. And that's why you need more than one person because I can't sing two notes at the same time. If you can, that's amazing. But I don't think I can. I don't think a lot of people can. I don't think anyone can. That's not a skill. But you can play more than one note at the same time. And so harmony in music is usually made up of something called a chord. So everybody at home, just with your mics off, just say the word chord. Music that's made up with harmony is made up with something called a chord. So what is a chord? Well, I'll play you one on the piano so you can hear what it sounds like. a fun harmony. <laughs> so if you heard harmony, you can type a Y in the chat. So the harmony was all the notes being played together. So there are three notes all being played by themselves. And now if we play them all together, we get that beautiful harmony. It almost sounds like one note being played because you can't really tell where each note is because they're all in harmony together. They all sound like one note. And it's what makes music really beautiful and it can give music such a beautiful quality it can make it sound happy it can make it sound sad it can change the whole mood of the song or the feeling of the song so for mary had a little lamb we have two harmonies that i'm going to play two chords so i'll show you what they are let me play them that's the first chord that gives harmony to the song and now here's the second one. Okay, so now that we know harmony is the chord or the multiple notes around a song, how does it all work together? So we've talked about melody and rhythm, which we know work together, but how does harmony work together with rhythm and melody to all make this beautiful song. So the melody 
kind of sits on top of the harmony. If you think about it, the harmony is like the strong foundation. The harmony is like the ground. It sits there and it, it protects the melody. It's just a good foundation. And then when you put the melody on top, it's the pretty part that we listen to. But without the harmony, if the ground just fell away, the melody would be, would be all alone just standing there and we need all of them to work together. So I'm gonna play our song that we've been practicing, Mary Had a Little Lamb. And the first time I play it, I'm not gonna sing, I'm just gonna play the harmony. And I want you to listen and see if you can hear those two different chords, two different harmonies that I played, that I showed you. And let's play them one more time by themselves. Here are the two different harmonies in this song. That was the first one and that was the second one here's the first one again and now here's the second one so did they sound different could you hear a difference in the sound if you could let me know in the chat by typing a Y and if you couldn't it's okay they're very close to each other and they share some of the same notes but I see that in the chat, people are saying, why? Yes, they did hear the difference. That's awesome, guys. Now, let's put it all together. Let's put our rhythm, our melody, and our harmony all together. And I'm gonna play on the piano. And then we'll talk about it a little more and I'll come back and I'll sing a couple different verses. How's that? Let's start by playing the piano. I'm gonna play the melody with the rhythm and the harmony. All right, here's our, here's our last question about that. Could you hear the difference when it all came together? When I played the melody and the rhythm and then added the harmony underneath, could you still hear all of those pieces individually or did it just all sound together? Could you hear the melody and the harmony and the rhythm? I'm looking in the chat box and Cami says yes, she could hear the rhythm and the melody and the harmony. And then Zach in the chat says it sounded better, but all it sounded better altogether. I agree, Zach. All those pieces, when they come together, they help each other. They're all okay on their own. But when they come together, they help each other and they sound really, really good. And in the chat, Monica says that she thinks she can hear it. Nice, Monica. I'm sure you can. Sometimes it's a little confusing because it all sounds good together. So when you're listening, you just listen to how good it sounds and you're not picking apart all the pieces. And that's good because that means you're just listening to the beautiful music and you're feeling that moving and grooving, which is what we want. And also in the chat, Tammy is saying yes, that she also heard all of them separately. So let's review one more time. So we talked about three things today. We talked about rhythm. We talked about melody. And lastly, we talked about harmony. And we talked about all of those things individually. And then we talked about how they all come together and they work together to make a beautiful song. So we've been doing this whole example with Mary Had a Little Lamb. So I'd like to finish off by playing Mary Had a Little Lamb and singing it. And I'll sing, I think I know a couple different verses. <clears throat> Does anybody know that Mary Had a Little Lamb has more than one verse? I used to not know this, but it does. And I think I know the words, so I'll try and sing that for you guys. So now I'm going to go ahead and play the piano and sing. I'm going to grab a drink of water. And while I'm singing, try to listen and see if underneath of my singing you can hear that harmony. I'll be singing the melody. I'll play the melody and sing it, but underneath it's gonna be that harmony that we just practiced. 
So it's all going to work together. So after I'm done singing, I want to know if you can still hear the harmony or if the melody and the harmony just work so well together you didn't even think about it. Okay, let's sing this song. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Let's try another verse. He followed her to school one day, school one day. followed her to school, which was against the rules. All right, third verse. He made the children laugh and play, laugh and play, laugh and play. Made the children laugh and play, which was against the rules. I'm not sure if those were completely the right words, but now we have a story to go along with our rhythm, melody, and harmony. Mary had a little lamb. It followed her to school and got her in trouble because you're not allowed to bring your pet lamb to school. It just causes too much, too much chaos. So now we've put all three of those elements together and we added on a fourth element, the story. So once you have your melody and your rhythm and your harmony, you have a beautiful base for a song. And if you don't want to have any words, then your song is finished. But if you wanted to add words, the words can go on top of the melody to create a story. And I think that a story is what makes music the most interesting for me to listen to. I like to listen to music with words because it's really interesting. And when I'm listening to the words, I start moving and grooving and I start swaying my, my head back and forth, and I'll tap my foot like Zach said that he does, and I'll just start dancing, and I just enjoy the music because I can feel the rhythm, I can hear the melody, and I can hear the harmony, and I love listening to the story. So I would love one last time to ask you guys a question. So I would love to have someone come on and tell me what they think makes music the most interesting. Is it the rhythm, the melody, or the harmony? So just thinking about those three things that we talked about today, the rhythm, the melody, and the harmony, I would love to have someone come on the mic, or if you just wanna type it in the chat, you can, but you can raise your digital hand and come on and tell me which one is the most interesting to you? Because everyone's different, so different people will think different things is more interesting. So do we have anybody who wants to come on and tell us which one is more interesting? The rhythm, the melody, or the harmony? Anybody wanna come on and, and say? If nobody wants to, I'll share mine. But I'd love to hear from you guys. Okay, in the chat, Zach says that he likes the harmony. That is awesome. The harmony is really fun and it's a really important part. And I have a feeling that you like the harmony because you played baritone. So that's the reason you love it so much. That's awesome. And then also in the chat, Joy says the melody. I am with Joy. I think melody is the most interesting for me. I love the melody. And then Monica in the chat says she likes the rhythm. This is so great. We have people who like all different parts. So Monica likes the rhythm. Monica, my fiance would agree with you. He loves rhythm. And then Tammy in the chat says melody as well. Melody she thinks is the most interesting. And the great thing is they're all interesting. And then when they work together, they make something really fun that makes you move and groove with your music. So thank you guys so much 
for tuning in today and learning what makes music moving and grooving, the rhythm, the melody, and the harmony. And we got to practice Mary Had a Little Lamb today, which is a really cute, fun song that uses all three. Okay, in the chat, Monica wants to know if I will sing one more song. Monica, I will sing one more song. Thank you for asking. What should I sing? Um, I could sing Happy Birthday. It's nobody's birthday, but I could sing Happy Birthday. That's a good song to practice our rhythm and melody. Let me look really quick. I had, I know I should know, I should have it memorized, but I don't know if I do. And I don't want to mess it up for you guys. So I'm going to look it up really quick just to make sure it'll be perfect because y'all didn't come for me to mess up happy birthday. <laughs> oh, also in the chat, Cammie says she wants to sing a song. Oh, and Zach says sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I can sing that, Zach. I'll, I won't play the piano. I'll just sing because if I play the piano, I might mess up the harmony because I'll play the wrong notes. But if I just sing it, the melody will be good. All right, here's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And while I'm singing, think about the melody and the rhythm. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. There you go, Zach. That was for you. I hope that you liked it. And I hope you can hear the melody and the rhythm. There wasn't any harmony because it was just me singing, but that's okay. You're welcome, Zach. Thank you all so much. I had a lot of fun playing and singing and sharing what makes music interesting and what makes it moving and grooving. And I hope for the rest of the week that if you hear some music, you think about those three things. You think about the rhythm or the melody or the harmony. All right, thank you guys. Well, I wanna say thank you so much, Amelia. It was great to have some music in my day today. Fabulous. If anyone wants to know what is coming tomorrow, tomorrow is cooking without looking. Hmm, okay. Some of those independent living skills. And then on Thursday, we're talking about recipes and making oublet. So hope to see you there. Again, thank you, Amelia. Thank you.